Hello again, Teresa. Hello, Lucas. So, uh, tanto tiempo. <laughs> yes, tanto tiempo. Yes, uh, that's the Argentine way uh, of saying, uh, right, a uh, uh, long time no see. And uh, yeah, I'm but you... You again. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so you have been actually uh, quite a frequent guest, uh, relatively a frequent guest on my on my interviews. So I'm happy to have you here again to talk about something really interesting. And today that's uh, pretty much or my way of putting it, the Faustian way of making tandas. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Kafkaesque. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it's it sounds a bit literary. Um, but um, let me just um, you want to talk a bit about special tandas today. Uh, but first, can you maybe explain what the usual, like the usual rules are for building tandas that most people follow or are supposed to follow? Um, because I think that's important for to understand why we make the rest of the video. Yes, there are some rules, and they are very good rules. And if you follow them, you don't, you can really make a good playlist for a milonga, which is um, within a tanda. Okay, everybody knows what a tanda is: it's four songs or three songs separated by another type of music. And within a tanda, and, and, and the couple stay together uh, during a tanda and change uh, from tanda to tanda partners. So it's uh, a good thing to have within a tanda some consistency of style and of mood. Um, so that the, this, so the, the dance couple can concentrate uh, on their dancing to this music for 10 or 12 minutes. And the rules are, same orchestra, more or less the same period, same year, and same singer. Okay, these are the, the, the rough rules and um, depends on how much material we have and how different the material is. Um, it's more or less uh, to, to follow these rules. And if you follow the rules, you don't, you don't make uh, rough mistakes. And I also, when I DJ, I, I DJ normally, I DJ spontaneously. I watch the crowd and then I, uh, I consider, should I play something rhythmic, something energetic, something romantic as next time that I <clears throat> decide which orchestra would be the mood I choose. And then I, um, I choose from this orchestra and from this, from the period uh, songs that I have in my collection. And this, okay, and I have a very, uh, quite a good uh, database so I can find the songs that are uh, candidates for the tanda, and this is the way I do it normally. And many other DJs do it like this. Yes, but then comes the Faustian way of uh, doing it. <laughs> Sorry, I, did, I hope that was the last time I'm going to say that. I cannot promise, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's essentially oh. like, um, but this is not, not like always uh, the right strategy, maybe. Yes, there are situations where I where it's good thing to uh, not to keep these rules. For example, it can be uh, it can lead to boring tandas. If you, for example, if you say I want to play Darienzo with Echagüe uh, 47, 48, 49, then you then this probably leads to a tanda which is very boring because every song, uh, all the songs are <clears throat> almost equal. They have the same rhythm, uh, similar melodies, similar lyrics. So um, you want to have more variety. This is one reason not to stick too much to the rule, but there are some special reasons. And I, I wanted to mention, or we, we said we want to mention these rules in this uh, interview. Um, okay, um, situation number one uh, can be that there's, there are songs that are really, really nice and really good to dance, but uh, they don't match with any other song if you only uh, observe the rules. <clears throat> so maybe one song of one orchestra, there's no, nothing else of this orchestra or nothing else which is uh, playable or danceable. And then uh, if you want to play this song, you have to mix it with another orchestra. Or within an orchestra, you have a singer that appears only once and you want, but you want to play a song with this singer and then you mix with, uh, with other singers of the same orchestra. This is, Situation one, and um, for example, uh, a, a, an example that is very, um, where I apply uh, this idea very often is uh, 
Francisco Lomuto, and there is one song in all his repertoire sung by a woman. This woman is called Maria Teresa Greco. Maybe it's a pseudonym, but um, okay. It's a very nice song, which is called um, uh, Como Lo Sabes. And I play it from time to time and combine it with other singers. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, just, just before we go to the other categories. So uh, I think what we forgot to make clear is that you generally make do things on the fly, but for some of these exceptions, you have to like more like you as Teresa Faust, you sit at home and really study uh, the material. Yes, well, Is that true? These examples that I mentioned now, this with with the, the female singer of Lomuto, I, I can do it on the fly because uh, okay. I can take any other three songs that match in in the mood and and velocity and um, this song. Uh, by Maria Teresa Greco is from 39, and Lomuto has a big repertoire of the late 30s. So it's this is a tanda you, I can make on the fly all the time. Uh, and I usually play <clears throat> the song with the female singer at, at the end, and it's often, uh, people react often uh, like surprised, but pleased. I, I never heard uh, a comment like, uh, it cannot be done or so. <clears throat> and I think I'm not the only one. I was the only one for a long time to do this, but now no, I'm not the only one anymore. <clears throat> so this is situation one to make a special thunder. Another situation can be um, you want to present uh, maybe an, an instrumentalist or a singer, but uh, there's not enough material to present this singer always with the same orchestra. Or this, uh, yeah. Or it may be it's interesting to present a one singer or one instrumentalist across his repertoire with other orchestras. And uh, there's, for example, there's one tanda I, I not, not it's not always the same tanda, but I, uh, quite often play a tanda with Elvino Vardaro, which was a, a very famous violinist, and he has he made great recordings around 1930 with at least seven, eight orchestras or even more. He was, uh, uh, he was um, uh, employed by the uh, Victor um, uh, Recording Company and he played with, with his Victor uh, Recording Company orchestras and also with other orchestras. And this is what, something I do quite often to play a tanda where Elvino Vadaro is really hearable, hearable with his style with different orchestras. <clears throat> And so I can combine Juan Malio, Juan Guido, and all, uh, he even played for Firpo and uh, and all these orchestras of the, the Victor label. Uh, Orchestra Tipica Victor, Tipica Porteña, Los Provincianos, and Peticelli. So we have a, a, a really big uh, selection of songs where Elino Vadaro really uh, shines in, in the songs. <clears throat> and okay, this is not, uh, you cannot do this uh, without knowing where, uh, who is the <clears throat> the solo violinist, but uh, this is a thing I have tagged in my uh, in my collection, so I can easily find um, where he's um, clearly hearable uh, that he is the soloist, but because he has a very uh, special uh, way of playing, a special sound. Um, another thing can be uh, to let a, si a singer present a singer with different orchestras. And I did, tried this some several times with Florian Ruiz, a wonderful singer from the, the late 40s and 50s. <clears throat> and he recorded with uh, Troilo, with Rotundo and with Basso and also with the Antolis, but the Antolis I don't play. So the other three orchestras, <laughs> and you, um, they, the orchestras have different style, but uh, the singer is quite dominant and his, uh, his uh, timbre of his voice and the style of his, of his singing is uh, like this that you can really combine uh, some songs but these are uh, uh, the, the tandas with Elvino Vardaro in the tandas with Florian Ruiz this is something that I prepare at home so I have in my in my tanda collection I have some tandas um, prepare or some suggestions say six seven songs from which I choose then a tanda uh, in the moment <clears throat> that I can um, present these artists. Okay, this is um, reason number two. And sorry, it, it's, it may be a bit of an obvious question, but I would still like to ask it. So why do you do this at home? 
because it's uh, uh, to to combine songs with Floria Ruiz is not so easy, and uh, I I could do it now. I know I know some songs so so well that I could do it also on the fly. But I, the, for the first time, I have to do it at home to to make the transitions. If I start with Rotundo maybe, and then I continue with Troilo. Normally, I, I I won't mix Troilo with any other other orchestra. But in this special case, I do. <clears throat> then I want to make sure that the uh, the transition is a uh, is good. It's yeah, you need to invest more time, pretty much, like research. Ah, uh... uh, and this it has, has also to do because I don't uh, pre-listen with uh, with uh, headphones in the milonga. Oh, really? I okay. I cannot. I for me, it's impossible to have uh, one music on the headphones and another music outside, and I, uh, yeah, I cannot combine these two things. And uh, and in general, it's it's important that the DJ listens to what is outside outside and sometimes he uses he headphones but not all the time yeah think. yeah 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 so therefore I do some special things at home to not be uh, obliged to use headphones <laughs> okay yeah and you have a more like uh, uh you just have the time and all the all the calm of the world when you're at home and you're not working. Yes, I, love, yeah. I love this work also. It's uh, when I say, ah, ah, I could I could look about uh, how to combine songs with Royal Ruiz, for example. I, I did it with other um, singers as well, but it's not so... Sometimes I, I, I uh, say, no, it's not possible. I, I don't find a good thunder. And uh, maybe it's uh, it was a good thing. Some years, many years ago, I was part of a team who ran a practica, which was called Tango Lab in Munich. And I was a DJ always in the practica, and we had all, all, always we had orchestra of the evening, and sometimes I had singer of the evening, and then I chose chose a singer with with a big repertoire across orchestras, and I chose a playlist, which was not necessarily tandas, but a playlist with uh, to present one singer or to present one artist, and this was uh, the beginning of my work to uh, to look how to combine, how to do unusual combinations. Yes. So to bring you back to what you were originally talking about. Okay, tandas uh, that is are not do not follow the the rules. And okay, this was reason number two. Reason number one was orphan songs. Reason number two was to present one artist. <clears throat> uh, and then are things like um, special harmonic or stylistic characteristics. That I want to combine and that are not com uh, not present in a in a whole tanda of one orchestra. For example, um, uh, I have one waltz tanda. This is really a tanda I play often, or not not too often, <clears throat> but uh, I have this tanda more or less fixed with um, choosing four out of six songs. And this is uh, these are Spanish and folkloristic harmonies. So, um, for example, Spanish harmony, when uh, Jose Garcia plays Dame tu Panuelo, it sounds like Paso Doble, it sounds like you are in Spain on a, uh, on a fiesta in, in, a, in, a, <laughs> in, uh, in a pueblo. <clears throat> um, so, and there are songs from Garcia, from Lomuto, from Rodriguez, where you have this, uh, this Spanish flavor. And they can uh, well be combined, and especially there are some valses not so in tango, not so much. Um, and I even, uh, then there are also waltzes with a folkloristic touch, uh, for example, um, uh, Meduele Corazon, the, uh, uh, the Miguel Caló con, with the Peru, Peruvian singing group, which is a Peruvian waltz, Peruvian um, flavor. And um, then there is one waltz where often people often ask, or DJs often ask, how to combine this waltz. It's so nice. And uh, the waltz, I mean, is for is Firpo's waltz, waltz del recuerdo, which also has like a folkloristic touch. And I combine it in a tanda with a roughly Spanish uh, or Latin American folklore um, harmonies. <clears throat> And this, this, this last waltz, waltz de recuerdo, I think this is what I tell is only for specialists if you know this waltz. Um, it has also the specialty that it has only one part. It has not A, B, A, B. It has only one part A, which is uh, oh. repeated all the time. Okay. Gives it an, an even an, another special flavor. Yes, yes, yes. Repetition. 
So that was the third uh, example, or did you want to add anything about the the, uh, the harmonic? Uh... Yes, it can also. Um, uh, no, I think this is uh, this is enough. Uh, Spanish folkloristic harmonies, and this is in waltz. It's not so difficult, but this is something that really has to be pre prepared at home. Um, now, once I know it, and I have I have also tags in my in my collection. Uh, with these harmonic specialties, I can combine it on the fly also, but uh, it requires uh, a lot of study studying at home uh, until you can do it. Okay, next uh, next point for me is uh, lyrics. If the lyrics, um, it can even be with the same orchestra and same singer and everything, but if the lyrics are in some way consistent, the thunder is better. For example, uh, I looked. I looked through my old playlists when you asked me to for this interview. And for example, um, uh, Di Sali, Tanda Di Sali with Rofino, 42, 43. There are about 30 songs or so. And there is one song about the tramway. And there is some song, song about a, a guy who goes out to the sea, Navigante. And there are several songs about a lost love and pain and worry about the love and des desperation. And so, um, you can easily build a tanda with only with uh, songs of this topic, worry, pain, and despair. I call it because of a lost love, Di Sali with Rufino, and there is, for example, um, De si me que paso, adios te vas, uh, si tu quisieras, and Toro. This is the tanda I I revised uh, in preparation of this interview, and this this is uh, not only if you don't understand the lyrics, it doesn't matter. It's not important. You hear in the in the way of playing and in the in the mood that is in the melody uh, and in the the way of playing of the tanda. You hear that it has something to do with each other. So and you can and you can even play uh, build tandas, maybe also of the sali that start with something optimistic, uh, with love, latin corazon, uh, al compás del corazón, and ends up with a completely complete despair like. And no me pregunten por qué, because I have to I have to drink uh, until I'm I fall because I have so much pain <laughs> pain because my my loved uh, one uh, left me. <laughs> so this is uh, for me it's a uh, it's a guide. It can be a guide to to build a tanda if I know the lyrics to build something um, that something similar in mood and. Um, yeah, it's consistency in the tanda. It's it's produced automatically, and it's this this idea can also be. Uh, I sometimes I uh, I uh, apply it because of uh, circumstances. Because for example, once I had to play on the evening of the final um, uh, football World uh, Cup. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, of the finals, it was because uh, before the match, and then I played a, a football tanda. Um, this is widely mixed between orchestras, but uh, everything we know, uh, there's there are quite a lot of tangos about football. When I know this and this and this, Canaro and Pugliese, you know, but uh, this is funny to make a tanda uh, for a special um, occasion, or for example, Mother's Day, which is tomorrow in Germany. Can it, uh, you can there's a lot of ton uh, of tangos about the mother, and I built uh, several. Uh, Mother Day's tandas uh, every every time it's a different one, and it's not. And it's this is also it's interesting and it's fun. And these tandas I I used to announce that okay now we have a tanda for Mother's Day, or oh, we have a tanda about uh, tramways and uh, railways because we are uh, celebrating the anniversary of Giesinger Bahnhof of my Milonga, which takes place in a in an uh, ex train station. <laughs> Okay, this is, uh, but this is more fun. But uh, the other thing I mentioned is that you really can build tandas easily that uh, have very uh, consistent mood and, um, yeah, yeah, consistent mood. <clears throat> if you know the lyrics, it's, it's, kind of, it's useful to know the lyrics. Yes. Not necessary, but it's useful. Okay, and then, uh, Talking about mood, and you can just uh, also, even without knowing them, the lyrics, uh, 
built Tanda's the mood that is transmitted by the melody or by the rhythmic rhythm of the songs. And um, maybe you can build a Tanda that is really dark, tan tangos that sound dark from harmony, from also from lyrics. And uh, for example, it's easy to, to build a really, really dark Tanda of Kalovit Iriarte. There's a lot of stuff uh, like Ojeme, Plomo, which is really <laughs> heavy, <laughs> heavy and dark. And these tandas are sometimes they are too heavy because when when people get people get too sad or too, uh, just I, I got comments about this. But it, it can be a moment to say, okay, now I play a really dark tanda, and the next tanda will be a contrast to it. And okay, by the way. Um, for me, it's important to have contrast from tanda to tanda and not um, rhythmic, cheerful tandas all the time, uh, three or four in a row. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. Cool. Rhythmic and next tanda has to be more romantic or maybe heavy or uh, or dark. Uh, yeah. And then, okay, I, now I, I, I told you five reasons to build uh, unusual tandas. <laughs> And uh, as last reason, uh, not reason, but last idea could be that you play not the uh, some some music that is not so common that other DJs don't play that is uh, unknown, uh, relatively unknown, and this is often old music. So um, this is something uh, I think some people avoid me as a DJ because I was. Uh, famous for playing very old music and a lot of it not this is long time ago i do still play old music but not so so much as before um but what i do play for example is uh, music of the 20s uh the late 20s or thir uh, early 30s of firpo or de caro and this uh these these orchestras are avoided by many djs or they are not uh, they are not so so easily accessible. It's also an important point. They are not. Um, most of this stuff is not um, uh, offered by the by the dealers where we now play our where we now buy our music like tango tunes and so you have to to build your collection. In it's a bit uh, difficult, more difficult to build a collection. But if you have a good collection of old music, then there you find always good songs. And but this is, you have to be cautious because not everything which is old is good. Many there is a lot of boring stuff and um, it requires a lot of listening of this this old stuff to find a really good songs. And um, yes, I try in in each milonga I think I play now two really old tandas and um, normally but people people like it. But okay, this is also another point. When people like it, they tell me, and when they don't like it, they don't tell me. So if you, the feedback you get as a DJ is always good feedback, positive feedback. And uh, uh, <laughs> when they, they don't like the music, they don't tell you. <clears throat> you have to have um, maybe persons of confidence that uh, tell you later how people were talking about the music. Yes, 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 yes. So um, I asked you to prepare something of uh, Firpo um, before 1930. Uh, and this for you, this is a, a case where you have to have to be picky or Canaro, for example, where there's so many recordings, but not everything is useful. But then when you actually do the research and you find interesting tracks. Uh, so can you tell me something about that? Yeah, okay. I've uh, we talked about this in the preparation of the interview um, of all the old music. There is uh, the, the amount of music, the sheer amount is much higher than when you take music of the 40s. <clears throat> Most people don't have this old music, but uh, I have a lot. And for example, I, I checked my the number of songs and the number of songs that I consider to play in the milonga. And for Canaro, for example, I have 600, more than 600 songs and I play 50 of them, so it's 8%. <clears throat> um, and I have to find these 8%. To find one playable song, I have to listen to more than 10 songs. Uh, 
okay, this is uh, this takes time, and I uh, I did it years ago, and I changed it. Sometimes I change my preferences. Um, so it's about Canaro Lumuto uh, de Caro. So it's about ten percent what I've considered playable. This is not uh, not the truth, but it's what I choose um, also for reasons of quality, but for reasons of um, easy uh, that the dancers get an easy connection to the music. It's, it's made it can be artifi um, artistically wonderful music, but uh, it's also it <clears throat> dancers have to relate to the music immediately, and this, there are not so many songs which uh, which do that. In Firpo, it's a bit more. It's eleven <laughs> percent, and I uh, to uh, to get these numbers into a relation, I also looked up for Di Sali and Troilo, and it's uh, more than forty percent for Di Sali and Troilo from all the stuff I have to the um, in relation to the stuff that I choose to play. So this is a big, uh, big difference. Even but it's even not every song of Di Sali is for me good stuff to play in the milonga. Of, of Troilo. But this, this changes all the time. And I, when I listen to a new song, then okay, this song can also be played, or another song is too, played too often, I, and I, I don't uh, take it into account. Yes. Um, so maybe uh, one, there, there, are, there are, I guess there are two things that we discussed earlier in private. Um, I wasn't sure if I heard that during uh, the your explanations of the types of uh, mixed standards, <coughs> for example. Um, so there's a case, for example, of mixing instrumentals uh, and singers, and there's a case of uh, mixing different singers when it's necessary, for example, with La Borda and Chagwe around uh, mm -hmm. 1945. Go, can, can you maybe go into these two examples? Yes, uh, I mentioned, uh, before I mentioned this uh, female singer, um, with the Muto, there it's, it's just a case. It's already a case to mix singers. Uh, I could also uh, mix it with instrumentals, but of Lomuto we don't have so many instrumentals. Um, yes, uh, the Chago in La Borde, there's a special period of uh, D'Arienzo in the mid 40s when uh, La Borde came as a new singer. A Chago came back. Um, when Hector Maure left the orchestra and La Borde came as a new singer, and they also also uh, recorded some duos. And in that period, Darienzo recorded a couple of really dark tangos. And these uh, both of the singers um, sang uh, these dark tangos. Uh, and this is for me, this is a, a good a combination. The, the voices are similar, but not equal, but you can combine them very well. Um, especially if that, uh, uh, as they also sang uh, some duos together. Um, ah, yeah, and I uh, maybe I should mention in this moment that uh, I'm writing for the uh, magazine Tango Danza, the German magazine. I'm writing a series of tangos, tandas, uh, with discussion also of the songs, not only the tanda, but the, the sing uh, singular songs. And I wrote, for example, the uh, a tanda uh, description uh, with the tanda of Echagüe and La Borde. Color Cielo, um, No Nos Veremos Nunca, Magdala, things like that, which, which are really dark and really like, a bit dramatic. And for me, it's uh, atypical Darienta, and I like them very much. And I hate Echagüe later. Yeah, me too. <laughs> for me, and one song and not, uh, nothing else. I cannot bear it anymore. Yes, <clears throat> yes, yes. It has no soul. Yeah. Uh, how, so how about uh, the mixing the instrumentals and singers? Do you ever feel the need to do that? Um, I do it without con without thinking much in earlier songs because the, the singers are not so in the foreground. When If I have a Firpo song with, with uh, uh, Teofilo Ivanez or just instrumentals, they are stylistically very, very similar. But I would never uh, mix uh, a Troilo with one of the Troilo singers with instrumentals because they, uh, these songs have really different characteristics. And also for me, the singers of, of Troilo and of other orchestras are so um, um, important for the style of the song as a whole that I, I won't um, 
uh, uh, mix it with something that has not doesn't have this style, doesn't have this style. And so Fiorentino, Marino, uh, Freud, Luis, Rivero, I, I, I never would mix them with instrumentals. Yes. On, I uh, also um, the Agostino Vargas, for example, and uh, also the Di Sali singers. These are the singers in the period where the singer was very much uh, a, a, an essential part of the music. And, and this, they are called um, El Cantor de la Orquesta. So the singer is really in the uh, in the focus and I won't mix in this case, I won't mix with instrumentals. But of the 20s and also of the 30s sometimes. Okay, maybe it's not really a question, but just one thing I wanted to remind you of. And that's the last thing I'm going to say uh, in this video today. Um, you gave me, or you didn't give me, but you wanted to give people the advice about how to really understand, for example, the old music. And you said like people should listen a lot so they learn. And I guess that's true for all the music we've discussed today. You can probably make better tandas from Troilo if you really know all the songs and you know what it's about. So. It's like people it's, have to. It's one thing to know about the lyrics. It's very helpful, not not necessary, but really helpful. That the tandas get better when you know roughly about what the songs are, and also for the early stuff when Canaro uh, recorded two hundred between two hundred and three hundred songs per year per year, as in the in the twenties. So they had already thousand songs until 1930 and I have 600 I have of them I have 600 songs from from Canaro until 1930 and uh, to choose uh, not every song is is a really good quality so <clears throat> to choose you have to listen to just to them musically the uh, the singer and the lyrics are not so important in this old stuff but um, it can be extremely boring when you take anything just without choosing really well. And I have my uh, rating system in my music library, which is extremely important, especially for this early music, that you only play music with a really good rating. Yes, yes. So that's how people can, for example, learn to make tandas of old stuff. It's just listen a lot and then separate things according to quality and uh, danceability. Exactly, yeah. And this is this is the preparation a DJ has to do. Not build tandas and play the uh, have the playlist ready when he comes to the milonga, but have ready uh, his ratings of the songs and have a pre pre chosen uh, song that is uh, he considers to to play. And uh, if you have a a, re a big collection, maybe of ten thousand songs, and uh, actually you play maybe. Uh, if you are, have a big repertoire, you play actually maybe 1,500 or so, then this has to be chosen, pre-chosen in some way. This is the work a DJ has to do at home. Yes, yes. Well, uh, thank you for uh, your interesting explanation. about. <laughs> I, uh... I hope it was not too, too difficult because we talked about music without hearing, which is, um, I think it's more a thing for specialists. Yes, yes. Yes, well, I guess for me, like you kept it both accessible for a lot of people and also interesting for the specialists. So I think it's a good balance. So who knows? But maybe people will tell us in the comments so, uh, how easy it was to follow. But it's indeed like it's a, probably a DJ talk. But um, still, I think it's a, it's a good, uh, can be of good inspiration for people, for example, who are already DJs. And they sometimes think like, how can I combine certain songs? And maybe oh. there's something in them. Or maybe even for new DJs, when they ask themselves like... And there's <clears throat> also some DJs publish tandas. And it's it, and recently a, uh, a DJ who published tandas 10 years ago. He's now um, uh, coming again with, with publishing tandas. Uh, he's uh, from Finland. Yeah. I remember his name now. But this is interesting. And... There was a time, I, I don't know if you remember um, Paul Bottomer, who had uh, his, his video channel for, uh, he had published a lot of, of his tangos and also uh, translations. And he had a Facebook group, which was called uh, something like uh, Tanda Chef, something like this. Today's Tango. 
No, the two days. I mean another oh, one. Oh, okay. You are, okay? There's another one. Okay, chef, sorry. Chef, which means uh, the master of the of the kitchen. Ah, mm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there are people published uh, unusual tanga tandas, and I published a lot there. Ah. <clears throat> but this group doesn't exist anymore, so I I don't know if you if you can find it. But this so there is <clears throat> interest of of DJs to uh, to find tandas or interesting tandas or. <clears throat> particularly to how to combine special songs they want to play but don't know with which with, with which to combine this is an interesting thing yeah it's good to have discussions about that with each other and uh, share information and mm. uh, inspire others so <coughs> i guess that was the goal of this video so thank you uh, for your interesting words and hope to speak to you uh, another time for this uh, for this podcast thank you thank you Lu lucas for the invitation